she suddenly becomes such a bully. Uh, any other questions? Because I have the answers. We're talking about bullying, and we're talking about the bully pulpit. In this case, it truly is inhabited by bullies. 855-400-7282 is the phone number. We're talking about many topics, mainly bullying. And everyone who gets on the show will get a free copy of my novel, Countdown to Mecca, perfect for Father's Day, which is only, what, two weeks away. And I hope you celebrate fathers because it's all we've got left. Whether you like your father or not, he's your father. He ain't heavy, father. He's my father. Remember that one from Boys Town? He ain't heavy, father. He's my brother. I used to love that one. I never knew what it meant. They'd always touch me, that Boys Town thing. I never knew what, like, the kid was carrying another guy in the home, and he used to say, he ain't heavy, father. He's my brother. That was a beautiful organization, Boys Town. Maybe some of the left-wing vermin now can uncover some crime committed against boys in Boys Town. To, to take away the, the dream that we had of some decent people on earth. Let's see, they've destroyed the Catholic Church and turned it into a, a useless organ. What else can they go after now? They've trampled our flag. They've trampled our country. What's left? Tell me what's left. These bullies. I'd like to know when there's going to be a counter-bullying in this country. Man, I'd like to see an army of 10 million counter these bullies. I'd love to see them stand up and scream in their faces. You know, wherever I go, I run into bullies, whether it's a nasty Prius driver on the highway trying to cut me off from the right lane with an Obama-Biden bumper sticker from 2008. Everywhere I turn, there's a bully. This morning, for example, I went to the supermarket with my dog, Teddy. And I'm shopping, not, bo not bothering anybody. And I'm checking out. It was just jammed in the supermarket. All of the mothers were getting their coffee and giving their children uh, donuts and coffee before sending them off with their current medication to to the government school. And I swear to God, I'm standing on the checkout line. I had a lot of items, like two bags worth. And there was a woman behind me, middle-aged, decently dressed, 40 years old. Did you ever get someone who tries to push you through the, the thing that's just moving with the turn? It's moving like with your stuff on it. She has to put her coffee right. I'm talking an inch away from your stuff. And you're not through unloading your cart. And I look at her and say, excuse me, lady, I'm not finished yet. Could you take your flowers and coffee? I don't want to hurt your flowers and spill your coffee. She says, oh, my, you have nice radishes. I said, okay, fine. She said, my, my radishes were nice, very nice. All right, so she takes back the flowers and coffee and lets me have the conveyor belt back. Meanwhile, the clerk is ringing and ringing and zinging, and I'm moving up to the cash thing. And you know there's a little shelf right next to where you slide your card? where most normal people put their wallet or whatever they took the card out of, where you sign the, the bill, this woman puts her hot coffee cup on that shelf. I look at her. I said, lady, what's wrong with you? Why are you pushing like this? You know what she said? Nothing. Another drug addict in Marin County. Another Stepford wife. Another drug-addicted Stepford wife in Marin County. There are bullies everywhere, on the low level, on the high level. We're living in a new age. Yesterday I talked about the millennials boy did i get did i get heat for that one they said you can't say all millennials are bad i said i'm talking as a social commentator and i still allege that the millennials will turn out to be the worst generation in american history the beatniks gave birth to the hippies the hippies gave birth to the yuppies the yuppies gave birth to the millennials they're the end line of the beatnik and the millennials are without conscience. They're like the Khmer Rouge of uh, China or of, uh, more specifically, like Cambodia. I don't mean they're actually going to throw you into a grave. I don't mean they're going to kill you. But they're like the Khmer Rouge. They, ha they seem to have no conscience. They seem to be zombie-like. No care, no feelings. They have no emotions. They, have, they seem to have no emotions other than getting what they want from the me generation to the I generation. Seems that the I generation, the iPhone, came along about the same time. So I'm not very optimistic that this generation is going to save the country, incidentally. Going back to that question, I think they'd roll over to anyone who, who raises their voice to them. They've been raised by bullies in the schools. They're intimidated by everybody and everything. And they have no feelings whatsoever for senior citizens in particular. So if you think that Obamacare is going to come along and save you, and the millennial has a choice between pulling your plug or keeping you alive? Get back to me on that one. WABC in New York, Line 9, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? 
Yeah, I think uh, Obama has bullied his last two, his two appointments to the Supreme Court to leak information about pending decisions to him. You think that he's getting information from Sotomayor, the most brilliant Latina in the history of the universe? And, and that other one, the, the bowling setter, whatever her name is. Yeah. In my day, she would have the other. In my day, the most she could have done was run a pickle store on Rivington Street. I forget her name. What a Supreme Court justice that one is. I think. What you you think that they're leaking to him? Yes, because I don't think he would have made those statements the other day if he knew that he. You're talking about him threatening the Supreme Court from uh, while he was in Germany. We have that sound by Robert. Let's listen to the bully in chief talking from Germany. Under well established statutory uh, interpretation. Uh, approaches that uh, have been repeatedly employed not just by liberal democratic judges but by conservative uh, judges like uh, uh, some on the current Supreme Court yeah, like you interpret a statute there. based on what the intent and meaning and the overall structure of the statute uh, provides for and so All right. this he, should he, be he's telling them how to interpret the law you hear this now he's suddenly on the Supreme Court He's the supreme, supreme justice, the bully in chief. He's committing statutory rape by doing this. He's trying to rape the Supreme Court in advance. He's scaring them that he's going to do something to them. My God, what a piece of work this thing is. All right, I get the picture. I get the, most people don't care. The millennials don't even hear what I'm saying. They're listening to, uh, I don't know, what they're, they don't listen to talk radio. We hear, that it's a, we hear the talk radio is aimed only at the dying population of old white men. Well, hey, old white men, welcome to the Savage Nation. Let's enjoy the uh, fall together. Are you kidding me? That's the only audience for talk radio? Who do you believe? That's true? How do you explain that I have a 25 share on devices? Who's listening to me on devices? 70-year-olds or 20-year-olds? Who's listening to Michael Savage, the most listened to streaming talk radio show in the United States of America? Who's listening to me, the millennials or the perennials? Who's listening to me? Who do you think's listening to me on iPhones and Androids and things like that nature? The young millennials who know what's going on. The very few who do. The very few who are homeschooled. The very few who are Christian. The very few who understand what patriotism is. The very few who come from a military or a police family. They're the backbone of America. Not the drug-addicted left-wing fanatics who've been bullied into submission. That's who I'm talking about. Don't tell me that the only people listening to this radio show are old people. And if it was, so what? You should be ashamed if you're an old person? Suddenly being older is, is a shame in America? What, it became a, a, a thing of pride to be an 18-year-old moron? No, I don't think so. Stand up to the progressive Islamic bullies in this country who are going to kill all of us. Stand up to the gangsters in the White House and their surroundings. Stand up to the progressive phonies who are bullying you at every turn. Now, many of you don't believe this is happening because the media continues to bend over backwards to support a president who will not even say the word Islamic when he talks about the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. They call themselves ISIS, the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. And yet this gangster in the White House won't even use the word Islamic. They call themselves Islamic, but he says they aren't. Nevertheless, in this country, in every conceivable space, from immigration policy to law enforcement to education to social policy to the military, Islam is accommodated and defended while Christianity and Judaism are attacked. Left-wing publications print completely false stories about university campus rapes, military rapes that don't exist, while ISIS forces eight-year-old girls to marry if they're Muslim and become sex slaves if they aren't. Where are the feminists who are outraged over these atrocities? Why aren't gay activists marching in the streets over ISIS throwing homosexuals off rooftops? I'll tell you why. They're too busy bullying Christian bakeries and pizzerias out of business for not wanting to bend at the knee to their homosexual weddings. Meanwhile, the Obama bullies have refused to curb illegal immigration through our southern border or to deport them once they're caught in violation of the bully's oath. But let me tell you something. Illegal immigrants from Central and South America are not the biggest immigration threat facing us. Much more dangerous are the hundreds of thousands of Muslims this administration has brought in through its refugee program from war-torn Muslim countries such as Somalia and now Syria. What possible reason can there be for admitting more Muslim refugees than Christian when Christians are being slaughtered by the thousands of the new Holocaust in the Middle East? 
Why bring in the people sworn to kill us and leave those being killed to fend for themselves? Because the bullies want it that way. It's divide and conquer. They're very, very clever, these sorority girls, aren't they? This is the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. I'm Michael Savage. Borders, language, culture. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage.